first of all, I want to know how Potato is doing. <laughs> Potato's good. He's uh, he's doing well. He's uh, we are cancer free. Um, and yeah, so we're in remission, I think three and a half years now. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's doing well. He's, um, hasn't eaten anything in like mm, two and a half years. <laughs> so, so he's doing good. He's, he's in good health right now. So we're, we're thankful for that. How old is he now? He is 10. In this month or 11. Yeah, I know. I love him so much. I don't think I've ever had like a a dog melt my heart like Potato did. And I love dogs and I've met many of them, but Potato has always had like a special place in my heart. He is a, such a good boy. So um, I have an after show that only shows up on YouTube. It's called Last Call. And um, I just have 11 questions for you. Sounds good. Shoot. And I'm interested to know what your answers are. What is your favorite breed? I think I already know. But... Oh, um, I mean, Pitbull's probably my favorite, uh, but I have I have lots of different breeds, but yeah, I mean, I, I do love my pitties. Yeah, I figured that's exactly what I would have said for you. Least favorite breed. Mm. You can be diplomatic. You can say something no, no, diplomatic. No, no, it's not even that, it's just, um, I have least favorite dogs. <laughs> Because um, as a breed as a whole, um, that's hard because I do find certain dogs of those breeds that are like, hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of people say doodles, but I actually like doodles. I think doodles actually, uh, they are actually really kind of fun to train and they actually give a shit more than some other dogs do. So okay. I love doodles. I know people, people like hate on them on this show. And I think I've only met awesome doodles. So I love the doodle. I mean, I have a ton of doodle clients clearly because yeah. I'm in Dallas. So we have lots yeah. of doodles. But my cousin who is a doodle lives in dallas <laughs> here. Um, anyway but i mean I, I i would say i'm a more of a big dog person um but i have a lot of littles that i just adore and uh i'll cuddle with and um but i mean there's a lot of little i probably schnauzers if i had to name one um although i have a really cute puppy schnauzer that i can go grab in two seconds because she's so cute oh my so god schnauzers are are tough like but she's good. So she's. Is, are you training this schnauzer? Or are you yeah, just boarding her? She's fantastic. She's got a really good temperament, which most schnauzers don't. But, yeah. um, but you know, they're just so barky, and people, <laughs> the bark is on a whole different level, right? They're super smart, so I actually like training them. But for whatever reason, I think it's the owners that come with schnauzers are not. Uh, like they're they're more relaxed about training boundaries and so schnauzers typically get away with things so it appears that they're not as well trained but they're very smart they can be trained it's just schnauzer owners for whatever reason don't seem as motivated to sometimes train them i have a lot of training clients that are that have schnauzers and they're fantastic and i i love those clients and and so that's not a blanket statement but but schnauzers barks are on a whole well, schnauzers level. are just like a very specific type yeah. person it gravitates yeah. toward schnauzers yeah. my sister and my mom both love schnauzers my they're both like pretty disciplined like dis huh. like my mom was a super disciplinarian and my sister's a teacher and she is no joke as a teacher but they they're the types that like to spoil their dogs yes. like i don't know what it is about schnauzer moms but it's funny because they just they they wax a little bit on the rules with schnauzers but so i don't have very many training clients for schnauzers even though they're very smart it's just training training doesn't they, they tend to spoil them more and it, yeah. you know, and that's, that's true of a lot of little dogs because they're just not as intrusive, right? Like they're not as, um, they're jumping on people. doesn't tend to bother people as much. It's not as inconvenient, you know, so little dogs in general, people give yeah. them way too much. Yeah. Way too like, much, way too much freedom. Freedom. Okay. Do your pets sleep in your bed? Pancake does. Uh, but the rest of them like to sleep on the floor in the beds. Um, potato does, it, it depends. Um, and they don't do it every night. Like, you know, it's, it's, they have to ask, they don't just jump up on the bed and like, you know, free nilly, but, um, but they, <clears throat> um, but they'll sit and they'll ask if they can come up. And sometimes I tell them yes, sometimes I tell them no, but potato likes to, pancake 
goes to the bed, like to the end of the bed and like sleeps on the corner. And he typically, if my daughter's in my room or something like that, he'll snuggle with her. Um, but uh, Potato likes to be like right up on me and he sleeps in, in my knees um, when he's in the bed with me, but it's not every night, but yeah, he, he'll he sleep in the bed. I don't, I don't mind it, um, but it's also not like a, I have to have the dogs. A lot of times right. I, I don't sleep very well <laughs> as many yeah. of you. Like it's hard because you have four bigger dogs. Oh yeah, no, they they could not all. I mean, I have a king size bed, but no, I'm not gonna have all, all of them in my bed. So, does your daughter do well with the the dogs? Like, are there any dogs that you're like that either of your dogs? I know the boarding dogs are a different situation, but she's uh, she's really good with everybody, obviously. And you know, I, when she was born, I had a lot of people that were like, "Oh my god, pit bulls!" and my daughter, and it's the whole thing. Uh, but honestly. So I lost my basset hound German Shepherd um, in December, right around Christmas, and he. I'm so sorry. Actually, I, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't. I don't think yeah, I heard about Ernie. that. Uh, it was Arnie. Um, I had Arnie and Bert. Bert was my my soulmate. Oh no, I do. I do remember this now. Anyway, but Ernie, uh, he's a basset hound Shepherd, and so, um, but he was he was uh, he had more hip dysplasia and like pain and stuff, and so when Lacey was born, uh, not a puppy. <laughs> name. Uh, she um, revealed the name. I, I totally revealed the name. Um, anyway, when she was born, um, you know, Ernie was actually the one that was more of a problem uh, with her. Like, he was, like, grouchy, and he was like, oh, don't, no, toddler, ooh, say, bae. And he was just more snappy. He's a basset hound, you know? But I was like, everybody was so worried about my pit bulls, and I'm like, I'm not worried about them at all. I'm worried about that one. But, the you know. bird hounds? Yeah, he's a Basset German Shepherd. Um, and so, like he was just, he was just more painful. He was more crotchety and he yeah. was old. And so I was like, he was more, I mean, nothing ever happened with her, but um, he was the one I had to actually watch more and supervise more. Um, but I mean, as you know, as a mom, like you have to watch your kids. Like you have to watch your kids around your dogs. Like, I don't care how great they are. I'm, my daughter's never allowed to like ride. I mean, has she tried? Absolutely has tried to ride my dogs because she's a kid and she's four you know she doesn't know any better right but that's not allowed and i don't get mad at my dogs i get mad at her like get off the dogs you know and yeah. so but, you know i mean she's gonna do stuff to push because she doesn't know any different she doesn't know how to read body language so we've done a lot of teaching on that i mean anybody that any kid of mine that lives with a dog trainer you're gonna have to know about behavior and yeah. so you know we we do flashcards. there's um there's this great website called dog on safe and uh, they have a whole bite safety program for kids. And, you know, so we've done all of that. And like, and I have educated her and educated her and educated her on what dogs look like when they're fearful, when they don't want to be touched. We have a hardcore rule when a dog comes to, I mean, obviously I train a lot of my boarding dogs and, and my boarding dogs are my training clients. And so when dogs come over, some of them have never been around a kid. Some of them have, are super fearful or we're working through confidence issues or impulse control stuff. And, and we have a hardcore rule. She does not engage with that dog for 24 to 48 hours. And then even then it's the dog tells her when they're ready to engage with her. And I mean, does she make mistakes? Of course, but that's why I'm always around to make sure that it doesn't happen, you know, and you have to supervise both and you have to teach both. You can't just teach the dog. You can't just teach the kid. Yes. You have to both how to interact with each other. So yeah, I mean, she's, she's fantastic with the dogs. She, I mean, she pushes buttons of course, but my dogs are fantastic. To I mean, the, the five seconds that I heard her speak, she's a very bright little young lady. I can tell you that. She's I can tell. <laughs> She came up and was like, hi, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so she, she'll give out my address. She'll tell everybody. She's like, my mom's a dog trainer. She owns power to the Paws Pet Services and Education. We live in the White House over there down the, I mean, it's like, whoa, girl, back it up. Oh. That's awesome. She yeah. and Noah would be besties because he's the, we call him the mayor of our, of our That's neighborhood because he knows oh everybody. Everybody. I'm like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Who or what wakes you up in the morning? Probably my kid. And if she's four, she's probably waking you up. Yeah, I mean, not always, but uh, the boarding dogs probably wake me up more. But, um, yeah. but my dogs are super stoic. Like, they'll sleep, you know, 15 hours if I ask them to. Like, they'll just, they don't wake up until I get up, uh, unless there's a problem. But, like, they're so fantastic. Like, my dogs are so meant to be mine because, like, they're my they're spirit. Chill. <laughs> like yeah i mean i deal with dogs that are crazy all day long in training and and stuff and so it's like you know when i come home i want chill dogs that just yeah. exist and want to cuddle with me and be good and 
I mean, obviously mine are well-trained, but they're they're just well-behaved in general. Like they just are super, super low back and easy going. Potato and Pancake will sit on a table. I mean, and you've met Pan Potato obviously, but I mean, he'll sit on a table at, at Texas Pester Conference. He's done it multiple times. There was one year <laughs> he sat on our event table, our vendor table, literally the entire conference. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what he did when I met him. <laughs> he'll sit there forever. And I'm like, he didn't jump down. I mean, he's just chill. He's just, I mean, a lot of people actually, like they think he's a stuffed dog. And I'm like, yeah. no, he's alive. He's just yeah. laid back. Yeah. I love that dog. Okay, this one's good because I ask everybody this, but I really like to hear from dog trainers. What is your most used training command or cue? Most used or most taught? What do you use with your dogs most? Uh oh, I mean, I don't, that's a hard question for my own dogs because I really try to train to where I don't have to cue the dog. I okay. try to train to natural behavior, so it's offered, right? So like, I don't, I can cue my dogs to do lots of things, right? But, um, <clears throat> but I will say for, so there's two cues that I use a lot in training for that I think dogs should all know. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at as far as um, the question. Um, I, a automatic recall, like, so come is one of the most important cues. Um, and then uh, wait. So just lots of impulse control. A lot of people that struggle with, <clears throat> with uh, their dogs, usually it's an adolescent dog. So it's somewhere between six months and 18 months, right? So in their adolescent years or uh, periods, <clears throat> those dogs are typically dealing with a lot of impulse control problems, jumping, barking, biting, attention seeking behaviors, just can't hold back, want to run out the door, want freedom, you know, all that stuff. Um, too excited for walks, so they jump all over the place. Lots of those behaviors. And I, I really, really, really want dogs to understand the more patience you have, the more you hold back, the better it is for you, right? And so I teach dogs to wait to go out the door. I teach dogs to wait to come out of a kennel, right? Um, if they're kenneled, I don't want them just bolting out. Um, I, I teach dogs that door behavior, just wait for people to come in, wait for us to go out the door. Like I don't want you bolting either way. Um, wait for food, wait for water. I just want that pause, that hold. It's not long, it's seconds, you know, yeah. but, um, and I don't like, if you're giving the dog a treat, I don't want them jumping toward the treat. So I, when I give it to them, I make them sit, hold back, wait, and then I'll hand it to you. Right. And so, yeah. It's just like, it's just learning to just give me a second. Like, don't like, I, I'm going to give it to you. Right. Like oh, I'm, I'm very positive reinforcement, you know, fear-free training in general, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's teaching a dog to just chill or to like hold back for a second. And it's just self-control, right? Impulse control. I like wait. Um, I think that's a good one. Yeah. So it's not stay. Like stay is taught where it can be long term, but wait is just give me a second. I, I usually tell people it's a mom finger, right? Wait a minute. Hold on. Do you wait. use wait with your daughter? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's the cues. I started training her literally with the same cues because it just made life yeah, easier. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So I started training her when she was four months old. She knew how to look. So look is a cue for me to give me eye contact. And, uh, and so she, she knows all the cues because when they're babies, especially, and they're toddlers, they don't, you can't speak in full sentences yet. Like they don't understand any of that. So she needed short cues. I'm like, it's literally the same thing. So, <laughs> uh, so people laugh, but I would say, sit down, wait, hold, look. Right. And it, I mean, same, same verbiage. Right. And, and she actually now she teaches with me. Um, and she'll, she loves to teach weight. She thinks it's fantastic. So, well, I use look with my son because I do yeah. think he's like in that like toddler stage where oh, he's yeah. so overstimulated yeah. all the time. I'm like, look, and I do the whole, like, <laughs> like your the hands. Your, your, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that too. I, I've right, just, what is your in the book and, and teaching kids or dogs and you wouldn't be able to tell which one I was talking about because it's the same. I, you know what, I, I did an interview with D Holt in Miami about dog draining dogs and training, um, kids. And I want to do literally the exact same interview with you like yeah. next season. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'll, cause you know, everybody's got a different perspective of anyway. Course. So even if I asked you the exact same questions, it would be a totally different awesome. perspective. Yeah. All right. What is your least used training commander cue? Uh, One you just don't use that people use that's kind of common that you just don't have a need for. <laughs> well, 
Well, I was talking about this one of my clients earlier. She was, she wanted me to train her dog, no. And I was like, what is no? What is it? Like what action is it? I mean, trainers don't train no, but people train no, or they attempt to train no. Um, and she had this whole conversation with me about it and really truly tried to justify it. And I was like, no, I need to know what action you're asking the dog to do. Like if you're asking the dog to sit, he puts his butt on the ground. If you're asking the dog to lay down, his chest hits the ground, his front elbows hit the ground. Like there's actually a specific action that's tied with it. What does no mean? They're like, just stop doing what you're doing. And I was like, no. That's it's, not what it means to the dog. <laughs> no, like, like you're just screaming, like you're just barking with the dog. Like, stop saying no. And you, and they poison the cue by now because they just scream no for everything. And we say no so much that it so kind of loses so it. Much. So much. Yeah, no. And it's, it, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to say no because I don't yeah, train. No, that's a popular one. And it's also, like you said, kid training, yeah, dog I mean, training. It's just as ineffective with children. Um, what pet related noise do you love? Oh, I can tell you lots that I don't love. Uh, That's the next question. <laughs> uh, what do I love? I mean, I, I, I think I would say probably like um, play growls, like when they're vocalizing and they're like having fun and they're and they're talking to each other. Um, those are probably my favorite sounds. Um, but it, like a low grade, like discussion like a chortle that kind of um i don't like barking, obviously but like they're talking to me you know those are probably my favorite yeah how about your least favorite oh God, licking licking that's a popular answer hands down licking it drives me nuts it's literally chalk on an i mean nails on a chalkboard ah for sure i so yeah. i don't I don't do that because I'm like, I'm, you know, obviously I'm a dog fanatic. I shouldn't mind sounds, but that one drives me nuts. You're allowed to dislike breeds. You're allowed to dislike noises. Like, you know, we have to normalize the fact that like people love pets, but there are aspects about the pet oh, experience totally. that's not 100% our favorite. Um, <laughs> you have many jobs within the pet care profession. Is there anything you've, th you've thought about adding that you might add to your resume? Uh, that's a good question. You know, I, um, for a long time, you know, the two areas that I won't ever do is grooming and shelter work, right? So that's the next question. So you're oh, yeah. answering yeah. it. In a, okay. So shelter work, you know, that no. doesn't come up enough, but I think that that's a really tough one. It's so hard, you know, and I mean, obviously I commend anybody that can do it because it's just, I mean, compassion fatigue is just so rampant in that uh, world and, and you have to be able to put that wall up. And, you know, the reason I got away from being a veterinary technician was how hard it is emotionally, you know, and I wanted to get to a side of the, of the world and I did it for, you know, 11 years. So it was like, I did it for a long time, but it just wears on you. It wears on your heart and, and you want to be able to do something better with the dogs. You want a happy place with the dogs. And so I wanted to feel like I was truly making a difference. So, um, you know, I, <clears throat> I'm always looking to uh, grow myself as a trainer, um, take on more aggression cases. I do a lot of behavior work, um, but it's just an area that anybody that's any good always knows that there's room to grow and there's um, always a place of like there's new techniques there's new stuff developed all the time so I, i'm always looking to add more in that realm um and and speaking in general just always looking to become more um consulting more business side i, I love running my business um, i obviously love doing the operations of it too but um but i do love running my business and and you know and just growing and helping other pet professionals because i've been doing it so long that, <laughs> um, that i do want to help you know the new the new newer people coming in so i'm a mentor for a lot of trainers and um and i have an internship that a lot of people go through with me so um you know it's it's just adding that but i don't know as far as the industry goes i i've thought about like adding in um, vet tech services to my company and doing in-home um, vet tech services so that you have those animals that just they freak out going to the vet for things like fluids or vitamin B injections or, you know, stuff that a tech can do. Um, but I'm only one person, so I haven't added it because I'm like, I, I can't add that too. Um, yeah. and, uh, so potentially maybe if I hire more techs, you know, um, in my company, we could add that maybe, but 
I don't. That's very cool. I, I got my hand up for it now, so I'm like, there's there's a lot of areas we can grow, um, and uh, and so it's yeah, I'm. I, you do plenty. I don't know that I have yeah. interviewed anybody that has quite as many jobs. Lots. I want to be kind of that one-stop shop for a lot of people. So yeah, yeah. you definitely are so far. <laughs> you definitely are. Okay. So the last question is if the rainbow bridge exists, who is the first pet to greet you when you arrive? Oh, Bert. Absolutely. Yeah. My soulmate. Uh, you know, I, I've lost obviously a lot of pets, but, um, he's probably waiting at the door for me. <laughs> Eight. Um, and what a wonderful reunion it will be it will be it'll be good so. did um did did this happen um before not a puppy was born yeah it was 2013 it was eight years ago so oh my goodness fresh wound but yeah Still. Still. it's crazy i mean i that whole process i mean it just it it was so it was so good because i i had not not under like you don't understand that process and that level of grief until you go through it just like people don't understand what it's like to be a mom until they are a mom right 100 percent. holy cow this is a lot harder uh anyway so you know it, it helped me to empathize a lot with a lot more with my clients and a lot more with my you know students and and pet professionals and colleagues and stuff and so you know it's a it's a terrible club to belong to but um it did it it obviously i grew as a professional understanding that journey and and it's just the the gravity of grief that that hits you on that level it's just it's just uncanny especially um, when it's a traumatic end oh yeah, it was. yeah it, it was it wasn't that you know and i mean no death is good but it wasn't slow i didn't have a chance to you know process it and cope through it it was it was very tragic and I blame, there's a lot of guilt with it. And there's just a lot of stuff that goes along with the, his loss. But, um, you know, it, it helped me grow as a professional. I wanted to quit right afterwards. Like I was done with animals. I didn't want to be in the industry anymore. I didn't want to put my heart out there. I didn't want a dog. And I, I, I was just hurting so badly, but I actually taught a CBR class three weeks after I lost him. And for oh, years afterwards, I took his collar with me. I took his ashes actually with me. Nobody knew that. Um, but I took him with me to my classes because I was like, he can't not be in my class. Like, that's just not, I mean, I knew, I, I mean, I've always joked about going crazy when I lost Bert because yeah. I knew how I was, but I had no idea it would go that deep. Um, but anyway but you know we've made through and i've i've maintained teaching and uh now i teach so that people understand more in depth of like it doesn't always save your pet but um even when you know all of it but um i do know that uh i have saved a lot more pets uh than i've lost and cpr isn't going to save everybody but i know how to prevent emergencies more than anything else and i can feel rest assured and know that I did everything I could in that moment. That's like, that's huge for closure too. I mean, can you imagine the alternative? And I don't want you to like go back to that moment, but Absolutely. the yeah. alternative of just standing there completely helpless. Absolutely. And that's just, it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible to imagine for anybody. And that's usually what makes people take the action, but it's like, you just don't know when that's going to happen. Right. You don't ever know when. And so it's like, you don't put off taking a class, just sign up and do it. Yes. You know? It's worth every penny. I totally agree, especially with somebody like you that's been doing it so long and has the medical background. Like, I just think it's so, so, so valuable. Well, I'm not going to keep you any longer because I know you actually have to work today. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. being uh, my guest. And I will be in touch over email to send you all the information about the links and all that. Thank you again and have a nice so weekend. Thank you. Take care. Left of it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye. I'll see you soon. Bye.